Today our talk is called Power Up Your Energy for Life. Life is all about energy, isn't it? And um, what I want to talk to you about today is um, about that. I want to apologize in advance. My hands are always moving. Um, also, I'm very intense and I talk really fast. Um, it's just part of who I am. So just love me and just forgive me and just take what you can from this presentation that's useful for, for you. Not all of it's gonna resonate and that's okay, but I want you to um, be on the journey with me as I tell three different stories and if you don't pay attention closely because I talk so fast, you'll get lost and you'll say, what, what what's going on? So I'm gonna tell you ahead and I'm gonna tell you three stories of three decades of my life and some of the experiences I had and the revelations I had about health and about energy and, um, and really what I learned from that. So we're going to start on a journey to Machu Picchu. So here we go. I was on a train in 2009, which circa, that's what, you know, 10 years ago. All of these stories will be about 10 years apart starting today where I'm 42 years old. So obviously about a decade ago, I was in my early 30s and I was thinking I was pretty well as a doctor here on a health plan, like I was doing healthy stuff. I knew I wasn't perfect. I know certain things aren't really that great for you like Starbucks or coffee or Diet Coke, etc. But I had been on a pretty good journey to getting healthier and I was on this train, going up to a place I dreamed of going at that time, you know, exotic vacations were not part of my life story, but I had planned a trip to the old Incan city of Machu Picchu that if you've ever seen it, it's at the top of these green hills, and they don't know where all the people disappear to, but it's beautiful. And so I was on my way up there, I had hired female guides to take me through the entire trip. Of course, my mom and dad were like, why do you have to do this stuff to us? And, uh, but in the end, it was an amazing journey. And I pulled out of my backpack on the way up on the train a book called Toxicless Diet. It's an old out of print book. I don't know how I had it, I had several books. And I started reading it and something happened that was what I'd say convicting. Now I want you to know something starting out here. Just to be real, condemnation comes with it guilt and a curse. But with conviction and correction comes the gift of hope. I want to be a gift of hope to you today, so I want you to hear what I'm really saying so you don't get into condemnation. Because trust me, there's that fine line between learning about what we're doing right or wrong and then doing something with it to change our future trajectory versus just beating ourselves up. I've done both, but I you know, recommend that you do the, the other one, the second one, the good one. So I start reading this book and I'm like, blah, 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 and it seemed good, and it's by Paul Bregg. Now Paul Bregg is quite the guy. He died like at 92 or 94 years old in his 90s pulling a tugboat in his teeth in the ocean to show he could. Now the year before that he did it, and the year before that he did it, and the year before that he did it, and I think it's, it's pretty awesome. On the back it says, by Jack Lane. if you don't know who Jack Lane is, just because some of you guys are too young to know, he's the guy that really started all the gyms in the United States, and he said, Paul Bright saved my life at age 15 when I attended the Bragg Health Crusades in Oakland, California. And then the Beach Boys, hope you know who that is, but if you don't, they're a pretty, pretty cool band. Um, they said, thanks to the Bragg Health Tech teachings, thanks to the Bragg Health teachings, we are happy and fit and singing better and staying younger than ever. And then, of course, there's Clint Eastwood, which I love this one. He said, thank you, Paul and Patricia Bragg, for showing me a health regime so simple and easy to follow. You make my day. All right, so here we go. So I came to page 11. You guys don't get the wonderful um, honor of having this happen to you and when you're in your 30s, but here you are now. And it said, food can make or break you. And it said, people are so steeped in their rotten habits of eating that they, are, they think there's some mysterious potion that will benefit all their physical miseries. They want to circumvent all their bad habits of eating. 
They'll, they will not get it into their thick skulls that foods can make you, you a physical wreck or it can give you health supreme. Dirty blood is the cause of illness and premature aging. Humans will not face the realities of life. They live in a dream world. When you tell them the average sick person that all their physical troubles are due to the dirty, filthy bloodstream, how sensitive and insulted they get. They want a careful diagnosis. They want all the modern tests. And then dear, the dear ones want a special name given to their physical trouble or troubles. Then they want a special treatment for their pet trouble. They still want to smoke, drink alcoholic beverages, tea, coffee, soft drinks, and cola, and eat dead, demineralized, devitaminized, bleached, refined foods, and also foods empty of calories, but they still want their aches and pains banished. There are no miracle cures except for the miracle cures that nature performs. Listen into this. This is profound to me. There is a great law of compensation. You cannot get something for nothing. Health, and I speak of the higher health, must be earned. No one can cure you. No one can banish your ailments. Health is working with this great law of compensation. Health building requires individual discipline. Your mind and brain must take over the operations of the body. Flesh is dumb. You can put anything into your mouth and swallow it. I'm almost done. It goes on, and it's so true, and it says this. Only a clear, intelligent, and reasoning mind will carefully supervise what is put in the stomach. Remember, what you eat today will be walking and talking tomorrow. You must decide which road you are going to take. So that's where I learned about the next part that I'm going to talk about today, about the law of compensation. I actually heard about this law from Emerson. I'll show you a quote in a minute. He wrote about it. So I knew about it from a philosopher, not from Paul Bragg. I didn't understand. He kind of said this, but I did, you know, I kind of deduced this and came up with a, a very simple algorithm, a very simple uh, formula. If you abuse your body, there's a tipping point where eventually your body will start abusing you. You can abuse it, abuse it, abuse it, abuse it. Now we want to blame genetics, etc., on the tipping point, but there is the component. But really it's all about what we're doing by abusing our body that eventually it starts kicking our butt. And you guys know what I mean. Maybe you don't. Maybe you were like me where I'll tell you in a minute how I didn't understand in my 20s why I was so sick. But Emerson said this, ever since I was a boy I have wished to ride a discourse on compensation. For it seemed to me when I was very young, on this subject, life was ahead of theology, I would say ahead of science, a perfect equity adjusts its balance in all parts of life. Well, the body is certainly one of those places. So we're going to talk now about the law of compensation and about how not getting enough sleep, a poor diet, not getting enough exercise, drinking too much, smoking, too much caffeine. I'm talking about myself there. This is the most vulnerable talk I've ever given, and I feel like I've done about 10,000 talks. If you really know me, I'm always giving speaking events at my office. And I got sick even this morning coming on to talk to you guys about this because it's so from my own experience. Let me tell you more. Basically, I have patients throughout the last 15 years, and I've worked with thousands of people. Almost everyone that comes in with an injury, unless they know, quote unquote, Thing they did, the accident, right? They want to blame it on something 20 years ago. You know, we, we don't, they say, Doc, I didn't do anything. It just must have been that accident, because Doc, I swear, I just got out of bed and I went to tie my shoes and I couldn't get up or whatever, right? But it's really, you know, it's really like the 10,000 little cuts. And let me explain more. There I was, for me, abusing my body by all the stuff I was doing. Oh, you'll see. It was silly things like, I discovered Red Bull in my own way. In my town, in the Midwest where I'm from, I found a Chinese grocery store and found Red Bull. Little did I know, I thought it was healthy. 
It had D vitamins in it. Little did I know, I was the first person drinking energy drinks. And if you'd already know how much energy I have, it's scary yeah. to see me on that, right? And then I had, I ate ramen noodles for at least a year at college thinking it's a cheap way to eat. I remember Burger King chicken sandwiches. I think I ate them like every day. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? And I thought they were like the healthy version of fast food. And I'm not trying to be judgmental. Again, there's no condemnation even for myself. But my family grew up on meat and potatoes, and somehow we got meat and potatoes. My parents are both obese. One or two of them are probably morbidly obese. We didn't know. My family's in chiropractic, and they're health people too, but we, didn't, we weren't eating right. We weren't taught by our parents and their parents and things like that. I didn't know that, you know, really social smoking would turn into smoking and pretty soon it would be a habit that would be so hard to break. That was me. I did it all. And it started manifesting into disease. It triggered Hashimoto's that was in my genetics. I had IBS. I had low energy. I got so fat and so depressed. And although I have this powerful relationship with Christ, you know, I don't know what your religion is. I don't know what your belief set is, but I know why I do what I do and who I serve. And so if I wouldn't have had that relationship, I would have gladly stepped in front of a bus during these years because I had seven years of fibromyalgia. So in my 20s, now here we are in my 20s, this was already happening. I was already, my body had already hit a tipping point in my 20s. Think how little I got away with. So it's weird, but people think, I don't get it. Why is this happening to me? Man, if they made it to 60 years old, rock on. I could make it to 28. So not proud of it. So then I read on and I'm going, okay, now I'm understanding there's this law of compensation. That's what happened in my 20s. That's why my health broke down. And then I read on and you guys are going to see some of the toxic lifts diet some of the things you can avoid to start changing the trajectory from one way to another. But this is the abuse to our body. Listen to some of it, which I'm not perfect at. Refined sugar or refined sugar products, jams, jellies, sherbets, cookies, chewing gum, soft drinks, pies, pastries, tapioca, I don't eat that, salted foods, corn chips, salted crackers, salted nuts, condiments, ketchup, mustard, Worcestershire, you know, I don't think olives and pickles are that bad if they're healthily done, but if they're not, white rice and barley and fried and greasy foods and commercial and highly processed dry cereals, corn flakes, fruity pebbles, Adrian cocoa puffs, <laughs> saturated fats and hydrogenated oils and palm and cottonseed oil, and peanut butter, right? I love peanut butter at that time. And that was an allergy for me. Fresh pork and pork products, if they're done right, it's okay. Fat and fatty and greasy meats, smoked meats. I didn't know, I am okay with bacon. I believe bacon is actually good. I also believe grass-fed meats are good. But we're talking about smoked meats and preserved meats and meats riddled with all the salts and stuff, like luncheon meats. We're talking about dried fruits that contain preservatives, canned soups. I remember eating canned corn, but we thought frozen was better. We weren't eating fresh vegetables growing up. We thought, you know, the two vegetables that came from the freezer and the cabinet were, in fact, healthy with our roast beef, white flour products, leftovers. Wow. So there I was reading it, I didn't even know where to begin, and I had this sense of like, whoa, when he talked about I was poisoning my blood, I didn't realize I had been poisoning my blood. I didn't realize that all the stuff that I had done, you know, had through the standard American diet, look at 1999, the average person, you're just like me, I don't know that I drink that much alcohol, definitely drink twice as much coffee as that, but look at the sugar we eat, look at the soft drinks, this is... 2009, 2019, 20 years ago. I tried to look yesterday and all my spare time between patients to see what the latest demographics are from when I could find that. And I can't find it, but I'm sure it's gone way up, right? All right, so here we are and here we're going, maybe you're like me today saying, it's not really that, it's not really that complex. Health is really very simple. If your cells are healthy, you're healthy. If your cells are unhealthy, you're unhealthy. 
And how do you get, get how do you know what your cells are doing? It's a question of if they're not healthy, it's two more reasons. It's either depletions from the food we're eating or toxicity. Too many toxins going in or too little quality foods going in. And what happens is it drives us up. It's not a complex thing. It drives us up to the tipping point, right, through all these things. So we're driving ourselves up to the tipping point where we abused our body, and then all of a sudden it's tipped over and abusing us. And it isn't one accident when you fell down the stairs. Our backs, our joints, our pain, our guts, and all of that is so much to do with how we're treating ourselves every single day. 10,000 little cuts add up to a big injury. But the good news is, here's the gift. The good news is, is God made us so beautifully, so wonderfully made as we're stitched together that just a hundred little good things, little good choices within two weeks just a couple changes, you can feel better if you start following the rules. And some of those rules, and you guys know this, are like really getting good sleep. If you can't get good sleep, ask me, I'll help you. I mean, I could have a whole talk. I could have a two-hour talk on sleep. It's very profound. But you have to get eight hours. 8.4 to be precise, to have the best memory capacity you can have. Older people always tell me, I don't need as much sleep. Doc. I'm like, that's because you can't sleep. <laughs> and because you can't sleep, your hormones and everything aren't rejuvenating. And I don't want to go deep into this, but there is now a new system that they discovered in 2012. It's called the lymphatic system. And it's a sewage thing in the brain where if you don't get enough sleep, you don't cleanse the brain. That's why there's not 100% memory capacity. You need four REM cycles uninterrupted. So if you're getting up to go pee four times, it's not working out, okay? We need daily detox. Eat less toxins, and then detox too. There's ways to cleanse your system. Some of it is called intermittent fasting. It's where you give your nervous system and gut a chance to have a break by drinking water. I know, it's not exactly fun, but I've been doing it, and you know, it's been really great for me. Five times a week, not one time a week, Every day, there should be cardiovascular exercise. This morning, I was trying to see if I could get my 300 calories in my workout before 20 minutes. 19 minutes later, I hit 300 calories. You could do 17 minutes and be done and have fat burning going all day long. I see people at the gym lined up, and I remember standing by my trainer at one point, and I said, they're all overweight. I know most of them as my patients, and they don't know how to exercise. I bet you they've been on there for 40 minutes. Doing a light, a light stride, not enough to get anywhere, not enough to get anywhere. All they have to do is do the kind of exercise that's smart where you go up and down fast, like H-I-I-T, okay, high intensity, and they could be like me, done in 19 minutes and actually fat burning, done. It's not that hard, we make it so hard, it's simple, but every day you should ask yourself, did I exercise today? Every day, we're supposed to be doing something towards exercise. We've become sedentary. Five to six servings of raw vegetables, that's minimal. Vegetables, eat them. Supplements, did you notice I didn't say fruits? Because that was a lie too. It's not fruits, you can have one fruit a day if you want to stay fit and thin and healthy, because fruit sugar is still fruit sugar. It's still sugar, it's still sugar. I don't care if it's fruit or not. It's just healthier than table sugar. But supplements, getting stuff back in our diet that we're not getting, clean water, are you drinking enough? Do you have clean water? Positive mindset with action. I have so many patients that are so depressed by the time they show up at my door or in my office. And they're down and I have to be careful about not making them feel further pushed down. That's why this lecture is so hard. I'm gonna tell you a story in a minute about somebody that it really breaks my heart, but it's these 10,000 little cuts that get us. But what I want you to know is, whenever you're in a negative situation, all you want to do is make a positive decision, follow it by action, okay? When you're in a negative feeling, experience, situation, you make a positive decision, and follow it by action. That's what I hope you take from today in a minute. 
but we're going to keep going. So now this is last fall. This is Thanksgiving. All right, and the truth is, is the third story of my life has three more stories in it. So stay with me, okay? So I wanted to go, I wanted to find out about the guy named St. Francis of Assisi who wrote a prayer that I wanted to like live in my life. I literally have tried to be a beacon of hope. I have wanted to bring love to hate. I've wanted to bring truth to deception. I truly wanted to be, as St. Francis says in his prayer, an instrument of the Lord, an instrument of peace. Oh Lord, make me an instrument of peace. But over the years, the truth is, with the culture that we're in today, I stopped being very truthful. I started being like joking about it. And we'll talk about that in just a second. I'm going to tell you about three patients after I tell you about Assisi. So there I was in Assisi, and I was learning about this guy who says, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, I love this one, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant me that I might not so much seek to be consoled as to console, or to be understood as to understand, or to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, and it is in pardoning that we're pardoned, and it is in dying that we're born into eternal life. Amen. So I was there, but here's the real story of Assisi. Let me go back to Assisi. Maybe, maybe not. So there I am in a hotel in Assisi, and here's what was really going on. I was laying with the newer version of this book, I didn't have this one, on the bed with a gut ache, reading the exact same book I hadn't read in over 10 years. Okay? Now, I've made a lot of changes since then, but I was in Italy. So I had eaten spaghetti. I had had croissants for breakfast. I had granola. I had stuff. Do you like my accent? Okay? You say no grazie. All right? I had tortellini that I made myself with my daughter, with the chef, and ate it all up. It was delicious. I had Coca-Cola. I had Chianti. I had strawberry gelato. I had eaten my way through Italy, and I made it three or four days in, and I was reading the exact same book, going against every principle I knew, about five little painful days of cuts. I don't know how many days it was, but it was just enough to kill me. I was laying there with a gut ache, like I can't tell you. Gassy, bloated, cloudy thinking, depressive. I was like, what is wrong with me? And then I wanted to blame the water in Italy, but it really was. Well, yeah, thank you, it is funny. And so there I was reading the same book, <laughs> laying in bed, having maybe more condemnation than conviction. Remember that? With conviction comes hope. It's a gift. It's a choice. And you can change your future. With condemnation comes guilt, shame, right? It, it stops us. So I don't want you to be condemned. I want you to be convicted, corrected, you know, and then redirected so that you can have a great life. So I'm reading it and I feel terrible about myself and so I recover and on the last day of my trip I did a water fast. According to Brick, that's a really good thing to do. And I was all motivated when I got home to be a health beacon, as they call it, a health crusader. And then this happened. I went home with all this information, ready to change the world in my practice. And in one week, Three people, their critical mass, the end of that trajectory down, hit them. First of all, I'd like to talk about a lady. I'll call her Dee. And she was one of my favorite patients. She had had this life in the Midwest of a difficult life. Her husband was an addict. He ended up overdosing eventually. He was always abusive. And she had to raise her own kids. She had one best friend and she had died and she called her her soulmate. And she finally made it, if you've never lived in the Midwest, to Florida, it is paradise. So she had finally retired a little bit early and she was here. She was definitely overweight. And right before I left to 
Italy to St. Francis of Assisi's town. I had talked to her and I said, now when I get back, Dee, we're going to get you on a diet, okay? And she was like, Dr. Wagner, you know, here's the thing, Doc. I have lived a life. I'm, I'm good. I know my maker. I'm going to eat spaghetti whenever I want. I'm going to eat pasta every day if I want because whenever I die, I'm good with the Lord. I know where I'm going. And I was, ha, 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 because remember, I had backed off. I had started being one of those people that would rather just, you know, everybody's happy than saying the truth. And I'm like, ha, ha, that's funny. I know what you mean, though. <laughs> you know, when I get back, though, we're still going to talk about your diabetes that's brittle, that's untreated. We're going to do something with that, okay? You know? And she was like, okay, Dad. And at the end, she said, I love you. And I said, I love you, too, Dee. She used to whisper it to me over the years I knew her, six, seven years. I love you. And I'd look around to see who else was watching. Because I thought somehow I was going to get in trouble as a doctor professionally to say I love you back. I wouldn't do it. You too. Right? It wasn't, it's just not taught that we're supposed to do that. But I'm so glad I just said, everyone looked. I love you too. Because on Tuesday night, my office manager, Taylor, told me she had died while I was in a CC. She got a common cold, it turned to bronchitis, and she threw a blood clot from how her 10,000 little cuts hit her. That was to me tragic, because her two daughters weren't okay with her mother being dead. And I don't think if I really got to talk to her and she knew that was coming, I don't think it would be so funny. That was heart-wrenching. But let's go back to Monday after this wonderful vacation where I'm a health crusader now. On Monday, I got a call from a neurosurgeon for a patient that I sent him who had scoliosis and back problems his whole entire life. We'll call him W. And W ended up going to a surgery because I couldn't help him because he waited so long. His arthritis was so bad, he had cord compressure all the way up and down his spine. And he had sneezed and his arms went numb. And I couldn't get him better. And the neurosurgeon left a message, do not adjust him. You could paralyze him. And I was thinking, well, I've already adjusted him 12 times. I never paralyzed him. Why is this guy being so dramatic? It's because his last surgery, the guy was paralyzed after. So he had a traumatic experience from a perfect surgery that went bad because he saw someone at the end of it all. Are you guys following? That guy's mad at God. He's mad at everybody. He's mad at his wife, mad at everybody. And I'm not saying it's right that he shouldn't be, but I want to be a beacon of hope even to him. So I kept on it. And then there's the third one that was Thursday. So this was a fun week. I barely made it to Friday, and my vacation buzz was gone. And there I am looking at my office manager after this one. This was interesting. I had a vet that I understand my father's a Vietnam vet. It comes with its challenges, to say the least. And we're dealing with a lot of them now with him. But he would prefer I don't talk about them. But the long and the short is this vet had a colostomy bag, and I'll call him Jay. And Jay would come in, and I'd smell booze on his breath. And I've dealt with people with addiction. I've helped so many people get to AA, etc. But for some reason, I just kind of knew. It's not going to change. So I'd be like, hey, Jay, lay off the booze before noon. You know, just joking with him. He'd laugh with me. You know what I'm saying? I realized that, like, I shouldn't have been doing that because he showed up unannounced, already released as a patient. He was great the last time I had seen him. Then all of a sudden he comes in and he said, I was out walking and my arms and legs went numb and I have this terrible pain in my head and I told my wife not to bring me to the emergency room to take me to Rama. I'm like, you need to go to the emergency room. He said, no, and then he fell over and almost died. We took an hour to resuscitate him. By the grace of God, his life was saved. I went to the hospital at lunch right after it all happened. It was traumatic for me. Um, basically, back to this, those three people and my three stories, I just want you to take that the cells are healthy, you are. The cells are unhealthy, you're not healthy. That if you do some of the simple things, in two weeks, I believe you can power up your energy. And with great energy, you can have a great life.